three absolutely massive stories today on News Worth Knowing. Firstly, the MK party, Jacob Zuma's party, will be on the ballot in the May 29 election after the ANC lost a court bid to cancel the MK party's registration. Secondly, National Assembly Speaker Nosaviva Mapisa Ngakula looked like she was being arrested and then she wasn't. But there are definitely significant criminal allegations against her. We'll explain to you what's happening there. And finally, a genuinely awful crisis in South Africa's higher education because one of the most powerful and significant providers of education, EDUCOR, they're in huge trouble. They've been told by the higher education department that they need to close. And that could literally affect the studies and lives of hundreds of thousands of South African students. This is The Issue with Dan Corder. South Africa is a movie. Welcome. This is The Watch Party. As always, if you're brand new here, a couple of things you need to know. All of our episodes episodes exist in a longer, deeper analysis on podcasts and all the streamers. Finally, pop us a subscribe if you like anything you're about to see and haven't before. Let's talk about the massive news that's taken place this week you know having watched this show a couple of things. Firstly, since the 16th of December last year where Jacob Zuma stabbed the ANC in the back, he's been endorsing and running the MK party super hard. In fact, they just put his name on the top of their submission list to the IEC for potential members of parliament if they get any seats after the election. But you will certainly know that in the last few months MK has been shocking the nation. They've been taking masses of voters in by-elections off of the ANC and the IFP and the EFF and not just in KZN but in other areas too. They look like a real force and a poll that came out just last week speculated that MK could get up to 10 or 11 percent nationally in this coming election. Maybe. And that that would cause a massive collapse in ANC support. Maybe even record-breaking support. So MK really matters. And the ANC has been doing everything within its power to stop MK. A few days ago, the ANC took a case to the IEC, the Independent Electoral Commission, saying that MK Party's registration was invalid and they shouldn't be even be on the ballot box on the 29th of May, which is a big deal. Again, if you've been watching the show, you know we've covered the very veiled threats of violence and civil war and no more democracy that MK leaders have made. Well, they will be on the ballot because the court ruled against the ANC and with MK yesterday. Here's all that you need to know. When when the MK party registered last year, they had to register with a bunch of signatures from people endorsing the creation of the MK party. And the IEC quickly discovered that some of these signatures were fake, or at least they didn't really, really represent people who really wanted MK to be created. So the IEC sent a letter to MK in August saying, you need to fix your application. You need to get legit signatures enough to actually register properly. Now, usually political parties in this situation would just reset. They'd submit a whole new application with the corrected signatures. But the MK party just sent in supplementary documentation on their original application to show that they had legit signatures. The IEC accepted it. But the ANC tried to schnein this. What they argued was that nowhere in the IEC rules and regulations does it use the word supplement. So basically what they were saying was technically by the letter of the law, you can't just, you know, add on to your original application. But it turns out you can. And the IEC said, no, of course you don't need to start again. We wouldn't have accepted the MK's original updated submission with the supplementary documents if, if they did have to start again fresh. It's exactly the same. In the spirit of the law, the MK party didn't do anything wrong. And then the court actually slammed the ANC a bit because the court also said, why are you bringing us this objection so late? There is space given for objections to registrations that parties can do or just concerned members of civil society. And the ANC was way outside of that kind of like deadline for objections to the registration of MK. And we all kind of know the reason why that's the case. The ANC didn't care about MK until Jacob Zuma attached himself to the MK party on the 16th of December, many months after when MK first registered. And the ANC said, no, we were trying to get our ducks in a row and we'd like special exemption, also known as condonation, to be able to bring this case forward. Uh, like we kind of decided in November, but then the court was like, November, that's so long after the case. And so the court actually threw out the ANC's case with a very damning word, saying that their case and their application was irrational. So that's the end of that court case. In a separate court case, there may still be a ruling. The ANC has argued that the MK party using the logos of the Oldham Contouissies, where the symbolism and the imagery of the original armed wing of the ANC MK, that 
The MK party now using those images could mislead or confuse voters thinking when they saw that, that it was the ANC they wanted to vote for. So there's still a court case, but no matter what happens in that case, MK is going to be on the ballot on the 29th of May, and that could have a literally history changing effect on South Africa's elections. All right, second massive story. We could not have known last week, Thursday, when we published our last news worth knowing. We did a huge piece on Nosiviwe Mapisan Makula. She even made the Uyaluta 99 leaderboard, deservedly so, it seems. We could not have known that minutes after we published that episode, the Mail and Guardian tweeted that Mapisa Makula was expected to be arrested tomorrow. Anyway, a lot of people went to that story, and you still can, to find out the actual allegations against Nosiviwe Mapisa Makula. Basically, she was Minister of Defense, and it seems like she took what now looks like 12 different bribes, and not just for money, although she did get two and a half million rand minimum in cash, uh, but also a wig which I guess is one way of giving somebody money in a way that you can claim is not a direct bribe because it's not got an electronic paper trail. And I really must express to you what a big deal this is. Mapisa Ngakula has been at the highest level of government for decades, since probably 2004. She has been the National Assembly Speaker for a few years. She's been the Minister of Defense. National Assembly Speaker is fourth in line to the presidency. No person at this level of power has ever been charged while on the job. Anyway, it looked like she was going to be arrested. And then on Friday morning, a lot of news publications said she's being arrested this morning. And UDM leader Bantu Holomisa, South Africa's favorite fisherman, he went on X and then a bunch of radio shows saying that she has already been arrested, that she's at Pretoria Central Police Station. Well, it turns out Bantu was wrong because Nosi Viwe Mapisa Makula has not yet been arrested. What actually happened was she was notified by the MP and the police uh, that there were going to be charges laid against her and she was invited to appear in court by her own volition to receive the charges. Uh, basically, you pull through, we do then we don't have to come and arrest you. And that's actually standard procedure for cases like this. The police don't want to go and break down your door and put you in handcuffs and put you in front of the media. You just tell them, we're going to do this, rock up. If you don't rock up, we'll come and fetch you ourselves. Unbelievably, on Friday, Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula could not be found. And uh, then statements were released on her behalf from legal representation saying, uh-uh, we believe this is a weak case. And Nosi Viwe Mapisa Ngakula demanded to see the case against her first before she was willing to be arrested. I don't know about you, but last I checked, if you are walking down the road in South Africa and a police van drives up to you because they're pretty sure they just saw you shoplifting, you don't get to say, show me the tapes before, before they put you in the van. You get arrested. The gall to say, ah, I'm not going to do it unless you show me the case first. The arrogance, the I'm above the lawness of the National Assembly Speaker. It was stunning. And then it got confusing because we were trying to figure out whether or not the police had actually listened to her and said, okay, fine, we won't arrest you. No, what actually happened is she'd been given this court summons. The NPA and the Hawks and the police had not decided that we will come arrest you on Friday if you don't rock up to court. She'd just been notified. But now she was kicking up this extraordinary fuss. And since then, Nosiviwe has just been spitting the classics out, all the classics that we've heard from so many different politicians. She has said that the NPA was trying to humiliate her by using apartheid-style tactics with no evidence. She said that, oh no, she's too sick and old to go to jail. She's a senior citizen and it will affect her health. Particularly ironic because Nosiviwe Mapisa Ngakula was about to head up a South African government delegation to Geneva, Switzerland, perfectly healthy to fly to Europe for a business trip, but not healthy enough, it seems, too old, it seems, to rock up for your court case and to actually have it processed, to just go to, you know, a police station to have it registered. Unreal. This is the Shabir Sheikh strategy again. Oh, I'm too sick. I'm terminal. I can't go to jail. I'm too old. And then they let you out on a bogus medical parole. And suddenly you're dancing at a rally, Jacob Zuma. Yeah, we saw that. So ill. Oh, poor guy. Listen, if he was too sick to be in jail and is now dancing like that at a rally, I want to talk to his doctor because his doctor Miracle meds, absolute miracle meds. This is the kind of stuff they use to bring people back from the dead. At this point, we should recognize it for what it is. And to use a famous Taylor Swift song, we should acknowledge when South African politicians use the Shabir shake it off strategy. They shake it off. They shake it off using bogus medical grounds to claim that, oh, you know, I'd, oh, I'd be happy to go to prison if you prove that I did something wrong, but I'm just too old. 
and I'm too sick, suddenly. But I will go to Geneva. And thus, they shake off their criminal convictions. So Mapisang Makula's legal representation has actually been fighting this in court this week. And listen, I don't think it's going well. Because the NPA said the obvious, which is that there are no negotiations between law enforcement and people accused of corruption or criminality. And the NPA said correctly that it's a courtesy. Hey, we're going to charge you. Either you come to court on your own or we arrest you. And ironically for Mapisa Ngakula, if she truly believes they're being, that she's being humiliated by them, she could have quietly gone to court and sorted this out instead of this public spectacle of whether or not she's going to be arrested and her frankly insane defenses. Mapisa Ngakula's current legal representation argues that they don't want any matter to be resolved until the 3rd of April. That's next week because apparently her attorney of choice, her pre preferred legal representation, a guy called Stephen May, uh, has business to conclude in KwaZulu-Natal on a separate matter until the 3rd. But the NPA also said there is no historical precedent for waiting for your pick me favorite lawyer. The NPA literally said, is it in the interest of justice for NPA to work on a timetable that is set by an attorney? If the applicant was in hospital, it would be a different story. In this case, it is not even for the convenience of the applicant. It is for the convenience of the attorney. So judgment in this matter has been reserved until the 2nd of April. The NPA agreed not to arrest Mapisa Ngakula before the High Court delivered it, delivers its ruling. So she's not going to jail until next Tuesday. In the meantime, she has taken special leave from her position as National Assembly Speaker, which constitutional rights lawyers immediately correctly pointed out is not a thing. You can't take special leave from your position as National Assembly Speaker because it's not a government civil role. If she wanted to take temporary special leave, a resolution in the National Assembly would have to be passed. So she's just chilling at home, having made up a reason to not rock up for work, trying not to get arrested. So we'll see whether or not she successfully shakes it off. Okay, so this final story is really genuinely deeply upsetting. There is a private education company called Educor, and Educor is one of South Africa's biggest, and they provide private college higher education to a raft of different kinds of young South Africans. There's some very expensive colleges, some much cheaper ones, some colleges that provide technical training. Educor owns some huge names like Damelin, like Lyceum, and like City Varsity. And Educor has been ordered to close by the Department of Higher Education, that's Bladen Zamande's people, which affects hundreds of thousands of students whose dreams came true to get higher education at one of these institutions, who've been dreaming about the lives that they could build once they get their degrees with the qualifications. Many of these students, it's the first higher education qualification their families ever had. Many of them are only able to go to Educor institutions because their families have pulled together money for them to go. So what happened? Basically, Educor is in a financial crisis and they didn't submit their balance sheets to the national government in 2021 and 2022. That is a big deal. They have to hand over their balance sheets, their finances to the government. And the simple reason why is that when you are a provider of education, you are held to an incredibly high service standard, just like if you're a provider of healthcare, because education is a fundamental human right and is absolutely crucial to one's chances of getting anywhere in life. And so the education industry is highly regulated. And when a private education institution wants to operate, the government rightfully insists on seeing their books so that the government can see whether or not there is a threat of one of these institutions closing or collapsing or shuttering for a while or just shrinking because that would really affect the students. Those are the victims, the students who the government's job, it is the government's job to oversee and look after all students even if they get into private education. The government would not be wanting to be giving permits or licenses to institutions that are putting students' educations and their monies at risk. So Educor didn't submit their statements to the government for 2021 or 2022. Now there are allegations of financial mismanagement, maybe even corruption at the institution. And the Department of Higher Education has finally acted. They've said enough is enough, partially because Educor has broken these rules and regulations, but also because it looks like Educor is spiraling and the government is trying to protect current and future students. But awfully, this means hundreds of thousands of students who've already started their degrees, maybe they're two years into a three-year degree or three years into a four-year degree, they are now absolutely screwed. So the government has uh, uh, ordered a phasing out approach for most of these institutions where essentially the institutions aren't allowed to have any new students. They've just got to finish like essentially getting those students who are already in the system 
to term to their degrees. And after that, their doors will be closed. But it's such an upsetting moment because firstly, it's unbelievably destabilizing for these students to know that they're in a dying institution where things might be falling apart quite quickly. The teachers and educators and administrators will be panicking and distracted, looking for other work, jumping off a, a sinking ship. It's also devastating because a number of students have been told will be will reimburse you uh, for the fees that you've paid, but you know that that can take a very long time, maybe even years, and there's misadministration that can happen all the time with that. And so so students may just lose their money for a while and not be able to get the money back to reuse to go to another college, another institution. The third problem is that if students want to transfer, they might be doing a degree that is not easily replicated in another university. So if they're doing a degree in a specialization which no other universities or colleges provides or teaches, then they how are they going to get transfer credits? They don't want to start again from the bottom. So my heart really goes out to all of these students who have been screwed over and it's absolutely not their fault. And I'm glad that the government is forcing educational institutions to actually carry them through phase out and finish off their degrees. But the uproar and the kind of disturbance, the destabilization of these students' lives for something that is not their fault at all. I just really hope the government and EduCorps does everything within its power to make sure that the students aren't the victims of this crisis. And I don't know how it's going to happen, but I hope that another private education institution or company or even the, the government finds the money to fill the gap because there are not enough institutions of higher education in South Africa. There are not enough affordable ones. There are so many students who finish matric and then don't get the opportunity to get the life changing degree that could really transform their lives, uh, get them the jobs that they want to create the lives that they want for them and their families. And for EduCorps to close is a crisis. It means that so many institutions institutions accounting for hundreds of thousands of students every single year not going to be there anymore which means that every single year from here on out there are going to be so many more students who get the degrees and maybe even get the money together but don't have a place to go to get a tertiary education qualification it is really such a disaster so that's news worth knowing for this week. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back on Monday with our next episode. Hope you have a fabulous long weekend. Go check out our podcast if you haven't yet. And maybe even give our Patreon a try. There's some really expert, epic interviews there exclusively for you. Less than 100 Rand a month gets you every single week an expert interview on a big issue facing South Africa. Cheers.